good morning to all my students today i am going to present a very uh, interesting topic with all of you and uh, hope you are going to like my lecture and uh, uh, that is rise of china uh, we have seen that in in, in the contemporary uh, era what we have seen especially uh, from the uh, end of the cold war uh, there was a lot of debate going on the rise of china and the rise the rising of uh, uh, a rising a rise of other power centers in international relations and that is really interesting um, but uh, if we are saying that rise of china is a, a, a reality then we have to see also the arguments in favor of rise of china and we have to also see the counter arguments uh, in uh, you know when, when we are talking about the rise of china then there is also a, another question uh, whether or not the rise of china is going to be a peaceful phenomena or will uh, china rise peacefully uh, or not you know that is also a very important question uh, then also uh, i am going to also discuss with you uh, that the pessimistic point of view and the optimistic point of view of the different of scholars uh, regarding the rise of china and also uh, as a regional hegemon uh, in the asian continent uh, or, and then also um, uh, Uh, the you know uh, United States of America as a regional hegemon in Western Hemisphere, and I think it is going to be a very debatable uh, discourse uh, with my students, and uh, my students are going to uh, like it, like this topic because uh, uh, this is very uh, you know uh, you know debatable issue and contested issue. Uh, so uh, first, I am going to uh, tell you that uh, we have seen in 2020 that uh, when it uh, when we talk about the PPP. Uh, purchasing power, power uh, parity index. Then China, uh, you know, was uh, 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 it was at first, you know, at first number, uh, you know, in terms of PPP. So because it was almost at twenty five trillion, you know, uh, you know, economy, twenty uh, five trillion dollars. Uh, so it was more than the United States of America. Uh, the United States of America uh, was at. Twenty trillion dollar. So uh, this is something. Then we we can also see the situation. What we have seen uh, in two thousand eight, we have seen a lot of economic crisis, uh, you know, in in in, in Europe, and, and that has really uh, had a uh, you know adversary effect not only uh, the European countries but also it affected the United States of America. And uh, then we are also going to uh, uh, discuss. Uh, then I am also going to discuss with you. A regional hegemon for for great powers. There are two important points. Uh, if uh, first thing that if you want to be a global power, if you want to be a superpower, if you want to be a big power, then you, what you have to do first. This is uh, uh, this this is the point of view of the Professor Mir Shimmer, and that that you need to be a regional hegemon uh, in your region. So, for example, if China is in Asia, then China has to be a dominant power in Asia. And uh, it has to show uh, that kind of power in the Asian region, so that there should not be. And the second point is that uh, you wanna prevent peer competitor in your region. So what China can do that China has to be able and capable enough in order to prevent that there should not be any uh, you know any other power which can claim that I am the you know dominant power in this region. So that China must have that kind of capability and that kind of power that it can uh, tell another power that. You do not have the place here. I am the superpower. I am the boss of this region. So, if that is the language uh, uh, you know used by China, once it will be that much of uh, capable state. And we have seen a lot of, uh, in terms of economic capability, China has become too much powerful. Uh, and uh, so, uh, a regional hegem be being a regional hegemon is very important. Uh, we have also seen that that, that other powers, uh, you know, were equally rising very fast. For example, you have uh, India. You have um, India. India also became very uh, big power in, in in Asia, for example. And uh, when it comes to the, it is economic capability and other. So, but when we are discussing here more about, we are more concerned about the China and uh, you know U.S. because it is about. Uh, so, if you uh, you want to. Uh, It is about the topic is about rise of China. So, uh, if you want to be a regional hegemon, then uh, you, uh, if you want to be a big powerful country, then for powerful country to remain powerful, they, what they can do, 
they have to be uh, they have to show that they are the regional hegemon this is one the second point is that you want to prevent peer competitor in your region so what is the another uh, dimension of this my talk is that uh, that regional hegemon has to show that uh, should be able to uh, declare himself as a regional hegemon only L1 one uh, regional hegemon there cannot be other uh, and any other uh, region hegemon in that region so uh, he needs to uh, she needs to prevent any other uh, hegemon in in his region uh, in her region so uh, there are two assumptions whether uh, china will be the regional hegemon in asia as uh, we have been hearing a lot about china that china is going to be the dominant power or the superpower in asia and, and will uh, and also it is going to be a very powerful country at international level in terms of superpower so uh, so it is going to become a competitor to us so uh, that is something we have to talk about and the second point which i am making here is that america will be the regional hegemon in uh, in american hemisphere and we have seen the america remained as a regional hegemon from 19th century uh, up to up till now uh, america is the only regional hegemon in in western hemisphere and same is the talk going on that maybe the china is going to be the regional hegemon in asia and because of economic capability because of military capability and because of nuclear weapons and many other you know uh, things uh, but there is also uh, some um, that uh, if uh, for example suppose the china is going to be the become the world power uh, whether uh, the other countries in the world are going to accept the chinese type of international order that is also very a contested issue because the china is a not a democratic country so that is going to uh, be a very contested very debatable issue among other nation states because they will not it would be very tough for them to accept the chinese type of system uh, because uh, china is not a liberal democratic country so uh, the, the, so the, the point is here uh, which i am making that china will be the regional hegemon in asia um, there is a possibility uh, you know uh, this is one assumption and the second is that it can be the same situation like the united states of america was the hegemon and is still the hegemon in the western he american hemisphere okay oh, uh, so uh, there there are two points of views regarding the rise of china whether uh, it is going to rise peacefully or whether the china's rise is a kind of uh, reality or it is going to happen uh, soon soon or later uh, as so far as the hyper power or the super power uh, you know uh, states of china is concerned or it will maybe does it have the that kind of capacity to change the liberal international order uh, i think that is very uh, tough because when we talk about the united states of america we are not talking about one country one nation we are actually talking about the entire west because you, you on one side you have the united states of america but uh, with united states of america you have number of countries who are actually believing in the liberal democratic values so i think it is going to be a somehow a very difficult situation but let's uh, we can only assume but let's uh, we can we can't say uh, you know what we can say we can only assume based on the evidences uh, so uh, and the point is here uh, pessimism pessimism view there is a one point of view is the pessimistic scholars of uh, they are saying that maybe the china is going to become the superpower in the world and it is going to become the regional hegemon because the so far as the economic capability of china is concerned the international order is changing too fast uh, the international system the international relation is changing uh, you know the uh, uh, and uh, so so far as the economic capability of china is concerned china has already you know uh, surpassed many other economies in the world uh, so therefore we can say based on the uh, the economic capability based on the military capability based on the uh, regional hegemon uh, in asia uh, maybe uh, we can say china is going to become the uh, the great power or the you know rising power in international uh, relations or international politics uh, this is one assumption and maybe once the china will be growing very fast uh, maybe in coming time uh, is, does it has the capacity to 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 change the you know uh, the international order that is also a very debatable issue i am not going to into that uh, debate the second point is that optimism view 
the optimistic view of the scholar is saying that if uh, how can uh, one regional one hegemon country that means united states of america is going to bear it, going to accept it uh, that the china uh, will become the superpower or regional hegemon so that is not going to be uh, the america will not uh, dilute this kind of argument and they are definitely they are going to use force they are going to use uh, you know all kinds of uh, you know uh, powers and all kinds of methods and means in order to prevent uh, in order to contain China, in order to prevent China to become the uh, another uh, as a competitor, uh, peer competitor, uh, or a regional hegemon, because uh, you have many issues in South China Sea. You have many issues in, uh, in so far as the Taiwan issue is concerned. So uh, I think uh, uh, there is there is a lot of uh, uh, you know dispute between United States of America and uh, China on South South China Sea and all as as also on taiwan issue so uh, optimistic scholars they will say that when the china will be thinking about to become the superpower or to to declare that i am going to change the international order uh, liberal international order that uh, that it, the america is not going to be silent that is my point america is not going to be silent because america will will uh, come with uh, all its allies and is going to you know enter maybe the war type of situation but the war is not the possibility because both the countries they have the nuclear weapons because if they will use the nuclear weapon uh, maybe there is going to happen the third world war and maybe the united states of america what the united states of america what uh, she can do maybe they will use uh, economic sanctions over china in order to uh, minimize this threat uh, you know uh, to, to become the uh, you know global uh, hegemon uh, so uh, this is the optimistic view. Uh, for example, uh, uh, there are different scholars who are supporting the pessimistic view, and there are other scholars who are also optimistic, who are supporting the optimistic view of the most, you know, optimistic view. So I think, uh, but we have seen uh, that China has been, uh, you know, rising very fast, uh, and with other number of countries, uh, you know, we have seen the, that it is a, some sort of transformation. Uh, you know, from the western west towards east, but but still we have to wait. Uh, maybe a lot of years we have to wait because it is it is the United States of America, which is the big country, which is a superpower, and it has it had remained a superpower from lost many years, many decades, uh, many decades. So we can't say we can't predict in a very uh, short span of time that we can say that China is going to replace United States of America. So that is something we have to wait for and uh, I think uh, uh, looking from the pessimistic point of view, optimistic point of view and regional hegemon because and many other points of then uh, we can say um, you know, possibly uh, uh, there is going to be a lot of difference uh, between uh, China and the United States of America in terms of power equation because, uh, uh, because United States of America will not accept that. China's dominance uh, to be the uh, China will become the regional hegemon because they are not going to accept this or that uh, United China is going to become the world hegemon. So this is something very much uh, controversial so far as the American foreign policy is concerned. They are not going to support it and they will do everything possible in order to prevent uh, you know China to become the uh, global power and to change uh, the international uh, liberal international order. So because the liberal international order is uh, controlled and influenced by the United States of America and uh, we know uh, that uh, to become the hegemon how much it is a uh, tough task but uh, that power is transitory and power is always changing you know uh, but still uh, the United States of America and is very much powerful country and let's see how it goes and who is going to become the global hegemon. Thank you so much for hearing my lecture. See you in the next lecture. Take care of yourself.